Bob Iacchino of LotusBrokerage.com. What's your suggestion? What would say Chicago if we were to show some unnecessary video, Bob? <laughs> well, first of all, I'm glad to hear you call it the Sears Tower. It's it's actually technically the Willis Tower now. The, the who? I'm one of the people Willis. fighting the Willis Tower. Willis, the brokerage firm. What do you mean, Willis? Wasn't that, uh, <laughs> it's named after... Um, Willis Caron. The oh, 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 okay. All right, so it's the Willis yeah. Caron Tower is what you're well, saying. Yeah, but it's still the Sears Tower to me. Yeah, it's still the Sears Tower. Is it it's still like the Hancock building? It's standard Oil? Things. Is it still the Standard Oil building? <laughs> That's in Cleveland. God, I don't even know that. That's in Cleveland. You know, it's funny because it, to me, quintessential Chicago would be the lions out in front of the Art Institute, but I'm a little more cultured than some of these guys. Yeah, but, no, that, and that's why we have you on. Uh, so right. what, what's happening in, in uh, what do you expect to happen today based on the GDP numbers, whatever you want to, uh, based on Greece, uh, based on Goldman, what's going based on? Based on all of that. Yeah. You know, it, it's a strange thing. If you asked me if I could go along the equity markets today, I would probably tell you no. Uh, simply because the, the, the Greek plan has been, they've let the euro sink too far, too fast, and now we're going to have a second wave of Greece worries when they announce the plan. Is, is that enough, and is that enough to stop the spread um, of that particular contagion? We seem to be talking about different contagions every three to six months now. But in terms of the, the equities themselves, what are we up, about 7% of the down now, 7.5% year to date? somewhere in that range, we could end up having a 20% year. And I'm feel, I feel like the guy sort of that, that like the prom queen said yes, but I'm sort of waiting for prom to get here. I mean, it just, it feels like the equity is yes to what? To go to the prom? What are you, what to are you go implying? With me. To what? To go to the prom okay. with me. And I'm just uh, all right. waiting. All right. I'm just waiting for that That would happen. never happen, I'm waiting by the for way. that last <laughs> trigger. Oh, I couldn't agree more. I couldn't agree more. Right, it never did on. happen, by the way. <laughs> exactly. That, you never didn't did. want to go with her anyway, right? Or the prom king. Remember those people? <laughs> I wanted to have anything yeah, to do with, with, with any of them. I, I was glad what Carrie did. You remember? Well, anyway, a five foot nine inch Italian troublemaker was never prom king anywhere. But it's it's it feels strong. It feels like there's wind behind it. It feels like we could go into the end of 2010 and end up with a 15, 16 percent year, and we're only up about seven right now. So there's plenty of time for that retail investor to get back in. High yielding bonds have sold about 100. I think it was 100 billion according to S&P, or I'm sorry, 100 million so far according to S&P this year, which is better than last year. So it seems like maybe. The retail, the retired investor, the person who would buy munis and corporates is starting to get back involved as opposed to just leaving it and making 0% in the cash. Bob, could you describe for the viewers a little bit of what you think is or feel is going on with the short positions? Earlier this week, we had that big tanking when, when the Greece downgrade occurred and then the Spain thing occurred after it a little bit. With those, what, short sellers should have been happy for a second, and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, no, they're taking them up again. Is there continuing capitulation with each one of these? With either position, Mike. I mean, yeah. I, I think that the issue here now is that it's still a trader's market. It's still guys like myself who just say, okay, we made a few bucks here. Let's just get out and see what happens next, especially when you have a situation like Greece. We've been talking for a long time now about the problem with having the, the single currency and, and the separate sovereigns. And there's just no, we don't have any way to understand that because this is really the first sovereign debt crisis within that currency. So really, we're all about duration, as I say over and over again in these right. interviews. When you're talking to an investor, the, the type of person like you, Mike, who probably knows deep down that we're going to have a good year in the equities, but the traders themselves are still moving it up and down, and you guys are busy trying to convince your clients that everything's okay, which over the long term, I, I tend to agree with. Okay, quick question. Uh, talking to a successful hedge fund guy last night, he said if the Greece thing gets done over the weekend in, in a positive way, that the market's going to take off once again. You don't agree with that? No, I do. I just wouldn't do it today. We've got into the month, and once again, you're going to start a whole round of is this plan good enough? Is Greece actually going to make the moves? Does this make Portugal okay? Does this make Spain okay? I think the market's going to take off. I just don't think it's going to be today. You've got the end of the month, and we've gotten a little bit of a rally, a, th a three-digit move yesterday in the Dow, which there haven't been that many of them in this rally. Right. So I think you're going to see some window dressing slash, you know, we always use these phrases, window dressing, just profit-taking for the end of the month to, for everyone to just sort of balance out their books. And I really think that's the way the day's going to end up. Mm -hmm. I don't necessarily, I'm not looking for a negative day. I'm not looking for three digits up today either, though. Talking just today, Mike. All right. Thanks, Mike. Bob, Thank you, Mike Collin, in fact, was uh, one of those guys. The, uh, he was prom king. Prom queen. He was the leading rusher, leading rusher at, at, at Harvard, no, running back at Harvard. No, no. no you were. No, Doug Cass told you that. No, no, you were. I mean, 
He had games. I mean, would you have 200 yards against Wellesley? That uh, <laughs> you were Bryn Mawr. He he ran over the uh, MIT. Yeah, MIT. Anyway, thanks, thanks, Bob.